Greetings, friends. Whether you realize it or not, we are in a food war. Major companies are trying to get control over our food system to prevent people like you and me from growing our own food. They want to own the rights to the food and to the seed so that we can't save seeds for ourselves so that everyone has to go to them for everything. And that's not right. And our upcoming generations depend on this. They depend on us having the right, the freedom to preserve our food system and our right to grow food for ourselves. And I encourage us all to take part in preserving our right to be able to produce food for ourselves. This is vitally important that we all have this right to do so. In light of all this, I have some t-shirts and sweatshirts that I'm offering with a design that I personally come up with titled Food Wars. May real food be with you always. To get yours, check out the show notes below. One of the goals that we have on my farm and homestead is to grow non-GMO seeds only. And did you know about 90% of the foods in your grocery stores contain GMO ingredients? Yes, they do. And some of the GMO foods include soy, canola, corn, sugar beets, Hawaiian papaya, even zucchini and yellow squash, potatoes, and even apples. And a couple months ago, while I was in Santa Rosa, California for the National Heirloom Expo, I had the chance to chat with a safe food activist and speaker who's been speaking on the importance of food safety ever since she was 13 and 14 years old, giving TED Talks. Pretty amazing. So here is my chat with Rachel Parent. So I am here with Rachel Parent who is big time activist for getting people to really know, especially kids, where their food comes from and knowing about the importance of knowing about GMOs is extremely important. And farmers for so long have not thought about the legacy that they're leaving behind and the way that they farm. And, and it's really important for everyone to be informed about these things. And uh, I really enjoyed hearing your talk today. Uh, but if you could just share with some of our viewers some of the things that you're doing because it is really neat and why it's important for, for everyone to know about GMOs, glyphosate, and so many of the other things that uh, most people don't know about. For sure. Thank you for introducing me. You're very kind. Um, and it's an honor to be here to, uh, on your show today as well. Um, I've been focusing on creating awareness about GMOs and the impacts of our food system for a long time now. And it, it started off with finding out about GMOs and the health and environmental risks. Um, and I was absolutely shocked by the fact that Canada and the U.S. are the only two industrialized nations in the entire world that don't require mandatory GMO labeling. We still don't have the basic right to choose the food that we put in our own bodies. And in addition, not having this labeling, we can't choose the type of world that we want to you know, support or the type of food system we want to support. Uh, so that's sort of how my activism started off. Um, and that's about nine years ago now. I started when I was 11. Um, and it's just been an absolutely incredible journey. But I think education is such an important component of this movement and understanding GMOs and understanding the impact of our food system on climate change, on our water systems, on um, everything around us and how it will affect generations to come. For me personally growing up, I, I really didn't have any exposure to growing my own food or, or anything. I didn't really know where my food came from at all. And since I knew that as I began to get interested more in the food that I ate and being interested in health and fitness, I wanted to know the story behind my food and I wanted to make sure that I was eating the healthiest food possible. Mm -hmm. And then I started having kids and I became even more aware and concerned about our, the food safety. And uh, for so many for so many people, they're, they're just a disconnect there of where their food comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, what is some advice that you would have for individuals to, to, to take extra steps to learn about the food, the story behind their food, so that way they can be more informed about these things? I think um, starting off with basic research of where your food is coming from, look at what you're buying and find out what companies you're supporting by buying them. 
uh, making sure you're planting seeds and understanding that connection with the seed. I think seeds are such a crucial part of teaching kids and even adults about our food system. Um, it's really a magical experience planting a seed and watching yes, it grow. Yes, it sure is. Um, and, and seeing how that develops into something that you can eat but that can benefit the environment and the soil as well. And it goes full circle. So starting off with basic things like understanding that, you know, majority of our corn, canola, soy, sugar from sugar beet, cotton is genetically modified and finding different varieties of foods that you can do to replace those, making sure that you're buying at least uh, non-GMO but hopefully organic uh, and regenerative agriculture as well because uh, that's the most important thing that we can do. Consumers really do hold majority of the power. Now as far as research, you provide an excellent website where people can find out about these, this, these topics mm -hmm. as far as the chemicals that are in our food and the GMOs that are out there and the Kids Right to Know is, your, is the website that you have. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other resources that you recommend? So uh, Kids Right to Know is our organization, um, so definitely go to our website, it's kidsrighttoknow.com. You can also find us on pretty much all social media, uh, just search up Kids Right to Know or at Rachel's News and you'll find me. Um, but there are so many incredible resources out there for learning more about your food and this is obviously just one but I really highly recommend if you're looking to educate yourself and your family, looking into Organic Consumers Association, looking to Regeneration International, uh, GMO Free USA, um, GMO Science, the, the list goes on and on um, of incredible people who are, are really working to make sure that um, our food system is benefiting everyone and the other few that are really great as well are Cornucopia Institute, Rodale, um, and Synbio Watch. So these are just a few small resources but you'll find more along the way um, and this is really beneficial especially educating yourself but then going on to educate other people so that we can spread this awareness. I know for me and uh, well, my wife and I, once we started getting into learning about these things, learning about GMOs and all the chemicals that are in our food, it almost became overwhelming seeing as you're beginning learning, it's like, oh no, it's, it's kind of almost get like doomsday apocalypse, yeah. but I, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, in addition to becoming informed, what are maybe a couple practical steps that people can take to, uh, to make better choices with their food so they're not exposed to so many chemicals, exposed to eating GMOs and things like that. So look for the non-GMO uh, butterfly sticker. It is a great resource. They test for GMOs, so everything has to be under a very small level of cross-contamination. So in that way, you can cut down on eating genetically modified foods. But I suggest going one step further and buying organic because uh, just non-GMO also does include pesticides and herbicides. Um, as of right now and so if you can buy them in combination organic tests for pesticides and the non-gmo verified label tests for gmos and so if you can put the two together and there are many products out there that have that um, you're making sure that you're eating the healthiest food possible and reading ingredients if you can't afford organic or non-gmo at this point just look for ingredients like corn canola soy sugar from sugar beet and try and avoid them to the best of your ability because these are, are really toxic, genetically modified foods. They're patented and owned by corporations, and it can be overwhelming. But there are some simple, small things that we can all do, um, and there are options out there, like buying um, organic grains in, in bulk and being able to make large amounts of food for quite little money. Um, and these are things that I've started to learn along the way that you can do healthy food on, an, on a budget at the end of the day. So there are things that we can do. Another thing that I want to add to looking at ingredients list is also looking at ingredients that if you can't pronounce yeah. them, then you probably should stay away from. That was one of the things that we, we started off. It's like, what is that? I don't even know how to say that. <laughs> well, exactly. And if you can't say it, it probably shouldn't be in your body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing that I want you to, uh, to talk about, and I probably should ask this at the beginning, is for some people, they don't know what GMR, GMOs are. Right. So could you kind of give a brief description of what a GMO is? Sure, so GMOs are genetically modified organisms and it's where they take DNA from one species and they insert it into another to introduce a new trait. So that sounds complicated, but really there are only main, uh, two main types of genetically modified foods as of right now and that's pesticide producing and herbicide resistant. So for pesticide producing, they'll insert a toxin directly into the seed and that way when the seed grows and a bug tries to eat it, its stomach will be poked with ulcers and it'll die. And then herbicide resistant is where they engineer it to resist chemicals like herbicides so that a farmer can spray as much as they want and it'll only kill the weeds and not the seeds that they planted. 
Um, and so these are the two main types of GMOs and it's really not as complicated as it sounds. At the end of the day, it's corporations that are, are trying to profit off of seeds and own seeds and sell them year after year along with the chemicals and herbicides that come along with it. Yes, and uh, with that, as you mentioned, that these corporations begin to own the food because they own the seeds and also they're trying to stamp out all these rare seeds and for us to have the ability to to have these seeds for ourselves the rare seeds the real pure seeds that haven't been genetically modified and it's very important that we preserve our food system by 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 not purchasing GMOs and buying the the rare seeds that we're celebrating here at the National Heirloom Expo. It's more important now than ever to preserve biodiversity and you know I was just talking about gene editing technology and all of that where they're they're really just trying to patent and own as many different types of seeds and organisms as possible and so in these times where things are, are tough on our food system and for our environment we need to start saving seeds, preserving seeds, and celebrating places like this at Heirloom Expo where we have the capacity to go out and find these rare seeds and heirloom seeds that have been passed on from generation to generation and that are really the solution to climate change, that are the solution to our food crisis, they are the solution to feeding the world. Uh, small farming and, and preserving our biodiversity is the solution going forward. Yes, and I, I'm sure you will probably agree, but for my soul, I just feel like it is deeply, deeply wrong for corporations to own our food system oh, where yes. we cannot produce food for ourselves. Uh, it's a common right that I feel every human being should have is to be able to produce their own food and provide their own substance to live off of. 100% and oftentimes people don't even realize the importance of seeds. Yes. I mean seeds are what give us food every day. Seeds are our clothing. Seeds are our medicine. Seeds are our buildings. It's it's so far beyond what we know and, and to have corporations monopolizing and owning our entire food system, they can control nature, they can control uh, who is able to receive food and these are scary things that yes. um, they are then able to have complete power over. So it's time to take back that freedom within our food system. It is and uh, what are some steps that you would recommend in doing that? We're here because of Baker Creek and they're a really big uh, company that is, is actually trying to help make sure that we can still have the right to provide our food by mm -hmm. protecting these and preserving these rare seeds. Uh, are there any other steps that you would recommend people take in, in just helping to preserve uh, as far as what may be growing seeds and saving them themselves? Uh, I think saving seeds is one of the strongest actions anybody can take. Uh, saving seeds has become a political act, it has become an, an act of um, resilience against the system that we're being faced with and I think it's so incredibly powerful to know that you have the capability of growing your own food, of saving the environment at the same time and preserving this biodiversity for generations to come. So if you have a tomato, save tomato seeds and you can grow your own. If you have a pepper, save those seeds, you can grow your own. The capability of growing food and protecting our environment is in all of our hands. That is, that is better. You are right. Exactly right. I also see here that you're on the Women's Voice magazine, so that is pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, do you have any projects coming up in the next year or so that uh, you want to announce or talk about? Or? We have a bunch of projects that are in the works, okay. um, but we will definitely let you know going forward. Okay. Follow our, our website and our social media and find out how you can get involved in these campaigns going forward because we're going to try and make 2019 and 2020 the years of action. There we go. You can also follow her on Instagram and uh, it's Rachel Parent on Instagram as well, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll follow you and keep track of what you're doing and uh, keep up all you're Amazing. doing. It's pretty Thank exciting. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, uh, yes. That's it for now, uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again at the thank next you. expo. For sure, yeah. and thank you for all the work that you do. It's so incredibly important. Appreciate that. I really enjoyed my chat with Rachel and cannot wait to connect with her again. She just provided a, a lot of information that I hope you find beneficial because I do. And some of the things that I want to add are that GMO, genetically modifying something, is very different than selective breeding or even cross-pollination genetically going in to an organism and inserting DNA from another organism is way different and we are just beginning we haven't even begun yet to to realize the dangers the health consequences associated with consuming genetically modified foods and even in the short-term studies that we have now they're they're seeing deformity structurally and chemically in mice that have been tested with eating with consuming GMO products and we've just recently 
have come to learn after decades of long-term testings to see the, the consequences of consuming trans fats and even artificial sweeteners. So please keep that in mind. So what can you do to avoid consuming GMOs? Well, one is buy products as you're able to, depending on where your bu budget is, buy products that are 100% organic. The U.S. law prohibits any GMOs from being in foods that are 100% organic. Two, buy foods from your local farmers. Get out to know your farmers, support them, buy from them. Most local farmers won't be growing GMO products. Mostly it's from industrial farms that are growing these things. Three, look for the label that says non-GMO verified on the label of your products. Four, when you're purchasing fresh produce, look for the PLU label on it. It will either have a five digit number or a four digit number. With the five digit number, if it starts with a nine, it's organic. If it starts with an eight, that means it is genetically modified. And if it's a four digit number, that means that it is grown using pesticides. And then from there, Learn to read food labels and understand what some of the derivatives of genetically modified foods are. And then lastly, and probably even more importantly, is start growing food for yourself if you can. Purchase seeds from companies like Baker Creek. It's one of our favorite, my favorite companies, and we purchase seed from them. And they support so many different foods and farmers from around the world to preserve all the different varieties that are out there to keep them from going extinct. Well, I hope you found this video beneficial. Also, don't forget to get your Food War shirt. Check out the link in the show notes below. That's it for now. And as always, be strong, grow on, live life without excuses. See you next time.